was on, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we need to look, and I feel very confident saying this, at the worst Keyforge creature ever. And I don't even think it's that close. It's utter terrible garbage. Though there is a saving grace. We'll get there in a moment. It's Toad! Ladies and gentlemen, I don't think there is much of a counter-argument to be made here. Toad is garbage. Utter garbage. It is a one-power creature with no armor, no elusive, no skirmish, and no helpful ability. Now, if this creature was a one-power creature with no helpful ability... It would be the worst creature we've had so far. But it can't reap. Okay, so it's one power, no armor, no helpful ability, and it can't even reap. I mean, even the flavor text is depressing. Prince Derek stared at his warty feet. His mission was not going well. Seriously? What's good about Toad? Yeah, we'll get there in a minute. Now... If we delve into this just a little bit deeper, we're not going to go too deep. It's a terrible creature. But the thing is, um, well, it's never going to be useful. Well, no, there's a slight exception. You see, it cannot reap. It has no action. So all it can do is fight. But it's a one power creature. So it's guaranteed to lose the fight. Now, the good news is there are some things you can take down. Probably chief among them is Restring Guntus. I mean, look, Restring Guntus is a one power creature that's actually super annoying because when it goes down, you basically lock your opponent out of a house until Restring Guntus leaves play. So you can use it to take down Restring Guntus. Now, you'll go down as well, all right? You're also going down, but at least you can take Restring Guntus down with you. And there's a few other creatures you can take down, like Helper Bot, for instance, although it will take you down as well. It, it's not ideal, but that's about the best use you're ever getting. Or you can use it to break Elusive, I suppose. So you attack, they've got Elusive. Ah, nothing can happen, say Dusk Witch. But then, from there, you can actually take down a Dusk Witch. To be fair, if the Elusive is broken, you can also take down a One Power Dusk Witch. But it's not terribly good, right? This is not a good creature. The thing is, it is a special rare. You see, Toad doesn't just rock up to make your deck unplayable. Toad comes along with Xenos Blood Shadow. And Xenos Blood Shadow is a very nice creature indeed. You see, okay, Toad doesn't do anything good. But Xenos Blood Shadow does, like, everything. It's a four-power, zero-armor creature, which is fine. Uninspiring, but we're all right with it. But it's got Elusive, so you can't just attack it. You've got to break the Elusive with something else and then attack it. And it's got Hazardous Six, which means after you break the Elusive, if you attack it, you take six damage before the fight has even begun. If you are a 10 power creature, you will go down because you'll take the 6 and then Xenos will do 4 to you and you'll be destroyed. And it's got poison, which means if you do any damage while fighting, you destroy the creature you're fighting. And it's got skirmish, so if you start the fight, you don't take any damage. Oh. Yeah, th th that's a lot, ladies and gentlemen. That is an awful lot. And the flavor text here really does build in the toads as well. I call myself Blood Shadow, make my home in Fangtooth Cavern, and turn my enemies into toads. What will it take for you to leave me alone? And of course, these toads are the fallen enemies. Getting rid of this dude's going to be a nightmare. Because first you've got to break the elusive. Then you've got to attack... Even though you're taking 6 damage before the fight even happens. Then if you take any damage during the fight, you are destroyed. So you know when I said a 10 power creature will go down? 6 for the hazardous, 4 for the general fight. Well actually, anything will go down. Unless they've got more than 4 armor. So something like a collector worm, for instance, could survive the 4 damage. 
because nothing is actually done and poison only kicks in if damage is done. But of course, Co Collector Worm won't survive the Hazardous Six. Collector Worm rocks up as a two power creature, so sorry. Very, very few things will survive a fight with this. And then of course, if you start the fight, you've got both Skirmish and Poison. So you will almost certainly do some damage unless they've got Nuts armor. And then you will take them down, but because you've got Skirmish, you'll take nothing in return. This is phenomenal at fighting. This is one of the best fighty creatures we've ever had. Having Elusive and Skirmish is great. Now, it's not the first time we've ever seen Elusive and Skirmish. Kindred Longshot has both Elusive and Skirmish. And when she reaps, she deals two damage to a creature. But she's a free power, which is one less. And she doesn't have poison. And she doesn't have hazardous six. So as much as I love Kindred Longshot as a fighter, don't think it is a patch on Xenos Blood Shadow. And seriously, right, the amount of times I've tried to say the name, said it wrong, and had to re-record it during this video. This is a really awkward name to get right. I want that on the record. And if I did get any wrong and forget to edit them out of the video... Please forgive me, it's a super awkward name. So this makes sense. And you've got to ask yourself how much you want to find this in a deck, right? Because Toad is garbage, but Xenos Blood Shadow is awesome. But you'll notice the little special rare thing there by Toad. Now, I don't know exactly how this works, and honestly... I know a few decks have leaked into Target, which is how we know all of the creatures and the cards. But let's face it, right? We don't have the, the knowledge. If you end up with four Toads, it is not worth a Xenos Blood Shadow. If you end up with one, it may well be. Now, of course, there is a third card that we need to add into our little group here. Because if we looked at the flavor text from Xenos Blood Shadow, make my home in Fangtooth Cavern... What will it take for you to leave me alone? So clearly there should be a card called Fangtooth Cavern, and there is. Incidentally, it is in this set. Sometimes we see it that creatures, cards are referenced, but they don't come along until a little bit later. Well, Fangtooth Cavern is an artifact. It gives you an amber bonus, and it reads, at the end of your turn, destroy the least powerful creature. And it is least powerful creature. It is not least powerful enemy creature. It is just least powerful creature. And you can see that this card is designed to take down toads. Now, sometimes your opponent will have a one power creature. Something like an aforementioned Dusk Witch or a Restoring Guntis. And you can get rid of them. Yay, etc. But generally speaking here, it's going to get rid of your toad. It could be kind of annoying. And look, even a one power creature, oh no, because it can't reap. So essentially here, yes, you're going to get rid of Toad. It can't reap, it's no good at fighting. You might as well let it take out Toad. But then in theory, once it's taken down Toad, it should hopefully be going after one of your opponent's creatures. Imagine if you can get rid of your Toad, maybe by throwing it into something and fighting. And then it takes out a Restoring Guntis or it takes out a Dusk Witch. That could be kind of amazing. It's another one of those artifacts that gives you an amber bonus, but you've got to be so careful when you play it because it just indiscriminately takes out the least powerful creature at the end of your turn. Now, the good news is it's the end of your turn, so if one of your creatures is the least powerful, you can use it to fight, take it out, and then maybe get one of your opponents instead. That would work. And there is a way to manipulate it that way. But honestly, this is a very risk-reward kind of artifact. It reminds me a little bit of Speed Sigil. I adore Speed Sigil, but it means that the first creature played each turn comes into play ready. But that is both your opponent's and your own. So I've seen plenty of games where one player plays down a Speed Sigil and the other player takes advantage of it to win the game. So I like Fangtooth Cavern, but you've just got to be very careful how you play it. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. The worst creature we've ever seen, but also one of the best. And then a fun little artifact.
I'd like to know what you think about all of these. I'd like to know if you think it is worth getting a toad in order to get the dude with a long, awkward to pronounce name. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we can talk about games like Keyforge and any other games that take my fancy or yours. And do please consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, etc. But by far, and they're weekly, incidentally. But by far the most important thing as always. Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.